Hello, everybody, and welcome to Scare Your Friends. Today, we are going right back to college to study the suicide room, and I am joined with my friends Dan, Dylan, and William. How are you guys doing? Wait a minute. What is, why are you saying this? What is suicide room? I wasn't informed of this beforehand. How are you doing today, William? I'm a little upset, frankly. I'm a little bothered, and my jimmies are rustled. And do you I'm like... Be... Do, do, do you prefer cyanide? What the Justice or... League trailer came out? No, you date the video, Dylan! <laughs> Dylan, this was going to be evergreen, and you chopped that tree down right off the bat. Unbelievable. Cut the evergreen, motherfucker! God damn it. Oh, <laughs> there was a whole bit there. Alright, how is everyone doing? Fine, I'm a little nervous Great. about reading about a suicide room right why, now. Why? Because the suicide room is my room, because I make people sit in my room and watch horrible fucking movies. What? Yeah! This took a turn that I wasn't what? expecting. Oh, God dang it. <laughs> I'm trying you to know! I'm trying to slow you know this first Hold thing. on, hold on. I'm trying to sloppily segue into the fact that we watched Street Fighter 1994 <laughs> today, and it didn't really work. I knew you were building to it. Dylan, can I ask you, because people are actually going to be curious about that, what did you think of Street Fighter <laughs> starring... Jean-Claude Jean Van, Van Damme as Guile, American hero Guile, and Raul Julia. Guile Dylan, keep in mind the microphone is right here. So really, it was a very, very fantastic film. <laughs> Why? A French dude trying to be. I American. said that already. Why <laughs> else? A... Let him do it. Let him <laughs> talk about. <laughs> is this Pax Bison? Yeah, it's Pax <laughs> Bison. Pax Bison. Yeah. Okay. And Bonop Bisonopolis. Right. Well, oh, what? Well, no wait. You have the what was the what was the quote? Uh, was that must was Tuesday. a very good, glorious day. It was only Tuesday. <laughs> we're actually we're getting sponsored right now for this podcast, but we're getting paid in bison dollars. I don't know. If yeah. Gonna... So, and yeah, since we're all just exciting. referencing the movie that probably no one's seen and no one somebody fuck we're it. saying. If you we're seen, sorry. Watch Go watch Street Fighter the movie, 1994, greatest cultural moment of the early 90s, <laughs> and a seminal turning point in cinematic history. And yep. speaking of Dan's suicide room, mm. he made me watch uh, Trapped in the Closet. Trapped in the Closet. A uh, hip hop by, by R. Kelly. You Don't... never answered my Facebook question, by the way. What, what about? I asked him, I, I told you to tell me when he comes out. R. Kelly, oh, R of the Closet? R. Kelly yeah. That was the, the joke. The verdict's, the verdict's still out on that one. No, he doesn't know yet? Yeah, no, we one don't One foot know. out, one foot in? Mm. Oh, are you talking about me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're that's fucking, all right. You're fucking choked. Oh, okay. Oh, well, shots fired. I'm going to edit that out. Don't got much. real defensive It's going to say, that. I am a chode instead of you are a chode. Yeah, there you go. We all know you can't edit well enough to do that. <laughs> to pull that I will, I'm going to do it. John got very serious. I'm going to edit the shit out of you right now. I'm going to edit you out of this I'm going to edit all over you. You can't even tell what I edit because you don't listen to the damn thing anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'll never, I'll never see it coming. Holy <laughs> man. We're in room zero. Ah, oh, damn it. Room <laughs> seven three three. <laughs> room zero was the last podcast. Yeah. We read. Yeah. So. We've moved rooms. Let's do yeah, it. we're moved rooms. We've moved 733 rooms. So, That's so Dan, successful. what was college like for you 20 years ago? Was it like? <laughs> Let me tell you something. It was in a simpler time. There was hope for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fucking, it wasn't that long. What was it? <laughs> three, four years now? No, I liked. Uh, college was cool, man. Went You're up, old. Went up, yeah, yeah. Went up to school in Buffalo. It was great. Hmm. Shout out to anybody who's listening to this and who lives in Buffalo. God help you. Yeah. We're sorry. No, it's <laughs> fine. The weather's shitty in the, in the winter, but it's great in the summer. No distractions. I mean, if you enjoy Buffalo, more power to you. Don't be an asshole. All right? <laughs> it's a little Fucking late. chicken wings, bitch. <laughs> I so mean, good. You got that going for you. Hell yeah. yeah. No distractions either. And you got the bills, so it's all good. Mm -hmm. Eh? Don't forget the sabers. I forgot about them. Oh my god, here we go with the fucking sports again. All day, I have okay. to listen to you. <laughs> so John today, we are reading a no-sleep story called Room 733. This one scariest story of 2015 back in the day. By who authorized that? Uh, C.K. Walker is her name. Okay. Who that? She's the author of this story. No, no, I don't but know who, much past no, no, no. who authorized, who authorized it the, that it's the best scary story of 2015? Who I'm not entirely that? sure how the no sleep ratings work. I you believe it's based on. Like oh, was it on Reddit? You're saying that one of the yes, award? this is no sleep. Uh, okay, it's so on the no sleep. They probably you can even see voting little contest. contest. Yeah, there's a little upvotes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's some sort of voting system. I don't know. I, I'm it not... says three with like a little bronze. That's three Reddit golds. Oh. What does that mean? Well, on Reddit, if you're a user, like, instead of just upvoting something, you can quote-unquote, like, super upvote it and give gold. If you pay, like, $3.49, you get a little gold emblem you can place next to someone's comment or post. And then they feel cool. And it gives them, like, a bunch of, like, privileges that are really crappy. But 
it's kind of like a super upvote. Yeah, I don't, I don't use, use Reddit, Reddit enough. To right, I mean, yeah. it sounds weird coming from the outside, and on the inside, it's weird too. And well, you're the think fucking, it's you're the Reddit king. Oh, shit, I'm not the. Send please, us don't, to us. please don't give me that title. Oh, good lord. Well, the, the Grand Star- Emperor of Reddit. Well, I occasionally browse. I'm the king of no land. Okay, Let, we should probably start Let's kicking off because this is good. So yeah. the reason why I decided to intro with the suicide room is because mm-hmm. of the first sentence of the story. So without further ado, here is room seven three three, the suicide room. That's what they call room seven three three, as if I didn't have enough to worry about on my first day as a freshman. We had assigned to dorm room seven three four, which turns out wasn't one of the nice add-on rooms in the south hall. No, we found ourselves in the older wing of the building on the seventh floor. I wasn't too bummed out, though. At least they had honored my request to room with my best friend. Linda and... Was that Lydia. 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 God, I, I, I read that as Linda. Lydia and I spent most of the morning moving ourselves in. By the time our resident advisor came by, I was, tap, I was taping up posters and Lydia was reading. Hi, girls, I'm Beth, chirped a bubbly blonde girl as she bounded into our room. I'll be your RA this year. You mean they're fucking fun destroyers. Hi, <laughs> I nodded her. Wow, you girls really work fast, she said, uh, taking in our made beds and hung up clothes. Beth picked up a drawing of Cthulhu. Best, best story we've read so far, just because of that. Why name dropping Cthulhu? Cthulhu, yeah. You guys, Cthulhu read your own. Fanboy yeah. harder. Oh, uh, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> Beth picked up a drawing of Cthulhu that Lydia had done over the summer. She turned it sideways, studying it. Is this the Kraken from Pirates of the Caribbean? Oh, fuck you, Beth. (laughs) (laughs) Good guess, though. There goes his ranger. Lydia glared at her over the top of her book. So anyway... (laughs) I'm sorry. So anyway, the RA continued, I know our hall isn't as new as the South Hall, but trust me, there's a lot of history here. This building is almost 60 years old. Uh, yes, I, I can see that, I said, looking around. The room is pretty small. Well, p- well, people were smaller in the 50s, Beth struggled. Really? Lydia said flatly. Yep, really, Beth pursed her lips and just continued to stand there, while the room filled with an awkward silence. So, I said, the corner room next to us, 733, isn't it? It looks a lot bigger than this room. Has anyone been assigned to that room? Or maybe we could... Oh, oh, you don't want to be in that room, Beth interrupted. There was a couple of suicides in there. A hanging and a jumper, if I remember right. They're not assigning anyone to that room. Anyway, I'd just like to remind you that this is an all-girls floor. And guys are allowed up here after 11. Mm-hmm. Okay, this Beth is like exactly the RA I had freshman yeah. year. Where yeah. he was all like... The R- the Every RA. The RA was yeah. just like, Hey, guys, every what's RA. up? Oh, buddy, buddy. And they do that on he purpose. He narks you. Yeah. What a bitch. <laughs> It was just three beers, Connor, you bastard. <laughs> and then we got our just desserts, though, because he got caught smashing in the room. In his room. Sick. And I went to a nice, like, upstanding Catholic institution. Nice. And they kicked him out. Dude, upstanding wow. Catholic institutions. They didn't kick him out of the school, but they kicked him out of the RA position. Upsta- I should clarify. Upstanding Catholic institutions, from my understanding, are the, like, cesspools of gangbangs and sexual... You just got... Oh, because it's like all these the repressed up. desires that you have when you're growing up and you're upbringing, and then you're in college and you're free. This is a weird conversation. This nah, happening. I'm totally sexually normalized. Don't okay, worry. cool. Fine. Well, I'm just saying that's where it's going. <laughs> no, I know. I know what you're saying. <laughs> just, all right, continue. Sure. Before we could reply to her, Beth clapped her hands with a quick, Well, nice meeting you. She skipped out of the room. Lydia dropped her book on the bed and stared out into the hall. I hate her. <laughs> Did you hear the, that bomb she fucking dropped? I'm gonna call her dumb shit Beth. Lydia, seriously, suicides? Oh, Becca, relax. Every college campus has a few suicides. Well, you are literally Lydia. <laughs> yeah, but in that room? Lydia sighed. Really? Who cares? It's not our room. Yeah, I guess. I turned to study the little window in our room. Can you imagine climbing out of that tiny window and jumping? You'd be alive for at least five seconds before you hit the ground. Oh, fuck, Becca, can you not? Lydia glanced at the window and shuddered. You know I fucking hate heights, and just talking about that shit is raising my blood pressure. We could always move into the suicide room, I teased her. That one has a window on each wall. Fuck you. Okay. Okay, but seriously, think about it. It would take a lot of commitment to squeeze out that tiny window. Yeah, well, remember, people were apparently smaller back then, Lydia mumbled as she pushed her bed further away from the window. So quippy. Yeah, it's great. The dialogue back and forth. No, I didn't even mean that in, like, a shitty way, which is probably how it sounded. It's fun. 
Since Linda was an outgoing and friendly person, yeah, we <laughs> made friends at lightning speed. There were a lot of parties in those first few weeks at one of, at one of which Lydia inevitably, inevitably met a guy. I know this girl seems to be wearing diapers, so I fully anticipated her having a boyfriend by the end of the s- September. His name was Mike, and he wasn't anything special. Just your stan- standard frat pledge douche canoe. I... Mm, Lydia doesn't seem like the type of girl to date that type, but all right. After about a month on campus, the novelty of college started wearing off. Lydia and I found our stride, and we spent more weekends studying than drinking. Squares. <laughs> Midterms were coming up in a couple weeks, and I was determined to maintain a 4.0 GPA throughout my freshman year. Fucking four corners over here. <laughs> <laughs> One night of a dean's list. One night in early October, I was woken by a loud grinding sound. I sat up in bed and strained to hear it again. Lydia was also wide awake and listening. Slam! What the fuck? She mouthed to me. It wasn't unusual for there to be noise in the hallway since other people came in at all hours of the night, but this sound had definitely come from next door, the corner room. Grind. Yeah, how do you make a grind noise? It's not really. It's not. You'll, you'll burn I know. Somewhere. I know. Is that? <laughs> yeah, Lydia whispered. That's the window next door. At Lydia's insistence, we kept our window closed at all times. However, there was no mistaking the sound of the window in room seven three three being open and closed again at regular intervals. Slam. Who's there? Lydia shrugged. Is someone fucking with us? Is this like initiation? Lydia raised her eyebrow at me. Initiation to what? I don't know, college? Maybe they're hazing the freshmen. Grind. It opened. Who is hazing freshmen? I shrugged. Slam! It shut. Becca, I love you, but that was fucking stupid. I threw a pillow at her. Well, whatever it is, go tell them to knock it the fuck off. Man, I'm not risking being thrown out the window. Grind. Well, I'm not doing it. I'm an art major. You're a political science major. You go lay down the law. Fuck that. Then call dumb shit Beth. Isn't that the kind of nonsense she should deal with? Slam. Oh, fucking, I don't want to read this whole thing. <laughs> this whole dialogue. I'm not calling her. They put that evil on me. Fine, Lydia whispered loudly. Then we'll just have to ignore it. I have class at 7.30, I whispered. There's, Grind. No, there's no way. Like, if I'm hearing shit like that... And we've talked about this before. I'm a huge pussy. If I'm hearing shit like that in the other room, the suicide room, <laughs> I'm not staying in my fucking room. I'm going, I'm sleeping in the fucking, uh, in the quad. I don't give a fuck. This dude's sleeping in a church after this. Yeah, thing. no, I'm like, I'm sleeping in the fucking downtown area, like the the, the, the hangout area in the fucking lobby. No way in hell. Park bench? Basement. Anything. Yeah, anything. I'll fucking sleep in that art department. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Then do something. Ugh. I got out of bed and stomped to the door. They were open dramatically and went into the hall to pound on the door to room 733, which simply said, Supply Room. People are trying to sleep. Please fucking stop, I said, and there was no answer. Slam! Dude, seriously? I sighed. I stepped back from the door and immediately noticed, and immediately noticed, I'm going to say, immediately noticed the problem. Room 733 was padlocked shut from the outside. Shit. I hurried back to my room. What happened? Lydia asked. I'm not going anywhere near that fucking room again. It's locked from the outside. I don't know how anyone could have gotten in there. So you're saying it's a spooky ghost, she laughed. No, I'm saying there's some creepy shit going on inside that room. Colloquially. Colloquially called the suicide room. Lydia scoffed and rolled back to sleep. You should have had drama, Major. We didn't hear the window next door again that night, but the next morning you can clearly see from the outside that both windows in the corner room were now wide open. I watched the windows on room 733 for an entire week, but they remained open. Occasionally at night, I thought I could hear a noise next door like marbles dropping and rolling across the floor. Since it never woke Lydia up, I didn't bother to say anything. One afternoon, I was alone in the dorm, editing notes on my laptop. I had my headphones in, but the music wasn't loud enough to cover the noise of someone knocking on the door. Come in, I said without looking up from the screen. A moment went by, and then I heard the knocking again. I jerked my earbuds out and slammed the laptop closed. I turned around. Come. The fuck? The door to the hallway was wide open. I'd left it open on purpose since Ian, a junior I was dating, was supposed to be dropping by. I heard the knocking again from behind me and literally jumped out of my chair. It had come from the other side of the room, the closet door. It was the closet that shared a wall with room 733. Lydia, you're not fucking funny. Nothing. Lydia, I swear to God I will punch you in the face. Silence. I walked over to the closet door and grasped the handle. Lydia, you're a fucking... a fucking what? Her voice came from the doorway, behind me. I let go of the doorknob and stumbled back wide-eyed. Lydia threw her stuff on the bed and turned to me, crossing her arms. 
I'm a fucking what? I I thought you were hiding in the closet, I said lamely. What? Why? Because someone was knocking on the door. Jesus, Becca. Lydia rubbed her forehead and walked over to the closet, throwing open the door. There was nothing there but clothes and boxes. She made a swipe of her arm as if to say, What now? I swear. Becca, there's no one here. I know what I heard. We glared at each other until our little standoff was interrupted by the timely arrival of Ian. He immediately sensed the tension in the room. Hi, ladies. What's new? I gave my roommate a hostile look. There's strange shit going on in that room next door, but that's not new. Which room? 735 or the empty one? The empty one, Lydia empathized. <clears throat> emphasized. 733. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's the suicide room. Right, we heard about the deaths. I sat down on my bed. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Three suicides, all in one dorm room. Three? Lydia raised an eyebrow. We were told there were two. Well, there was a couple people in the 70s, and then some guy about ten years ago. He jumped out the window. Lydia and I both shuddered. Although she was much worse, we were both terrified of heights. A falling death was about the worst thing I could think of. I will admit that three suicides in the same dorm room is fucking disturbing, Lydia said in an apologetic tone. Yeah, I heard there's something in that room, Ian said. Like what? No one knows, but every year someone has a new theory. Usually right around Halloween, something gets published in the campus paper. Whatever is in there, though, it ain't friendly. So has anyone ever killed themselves in the neighboring rooms like this one? Nah, just 733. Honestly, I was surprised when I heard they were opening the North Hall this year. They told us we were the biggest incoming freshman class in 20 years, I said absentmindedly. Yeah, I heard that too. You know, you could request a room change, Ian sat down on the bed next to me and I leaned against his shoulder. Yeah, but that wouldn't keep us together, Lydia cut in. Becky and I have been best friends for 15 years. We can't room with other people. So should we keep living here next to Satan? Fair point. I glanced at the closet door. Lydia shrugged. At least we'll have some stories to tell after graduation. Mm. Mistake. <laughs> Strike one. These aren't the kind of stories I want to tell. So, real quick, what do you guys... Um, Dylan left real quick, but what do you guys think? I'm digging it so far. Yeah, so far, pretty, it's... Sorry. Pretty simple. I'm, I'm looking at Dylan's feet on the stairs as he's trying to spook us. Yeah, this is just baffling what's up. happening right now. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I feel like so far, it's kind of structured almost like a stage play. Like, it's all taking place in one room, a little bit, and yeah. it's all dialogue. Yeah. There's no fun. action, you know? Who can you, really? Yeah. Try to get the place. Yeah, sit down, you weenie. <laughs> Have you caught up or no? Uh, I tried. You'll figure it out. Um, um, it was a fierce fight. Uh, oh. These aren't the stories I want to tell is the last thing that was read. So, I don't know how far you are. But yeah, I don't know. I also feel like it's very much... I don't know. Is, is Are you thinking more Sorkin or Judge Apatow? For the dialogue. Because I'm torn, <laughs> frankly. It could go either way. I don't know. I, in terms of story, I, I mean, so far, it's a pretty really, really simple, basic plot. And that's fine. Yeah. I like the idea. Simple enough. It's got kind of like the the overwrought wordiness of Sorkin a little bit, but it's got kind of the crassness and bite of Apatow. That's true. That's what I'm seeing. Right. So we'll see. But yeah, I don't know. I, I like this story so far. I just hope, again, like every other story we've read, I hope it doesn't take a, almost every other story, I hope it doesn't take a nosedive. Like fucking the narrator's the ghost the whole fucking time. You know what I mean? I've been spooky a all along. Yeah, yeah. A few days later, Lydia began to believe my closet story. I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of someone whispering. I looked over at Lydia, who was already staring at me with wide eyes. She slowly brought a finger to her lips. I listened intently, trying to hear what the voice was saying and where it was coming from, but I couldn't but I couldn't understand even one word. I got out of bed and tiptoed over to Lydia. The whispering was definitely louder over there. But then she stared at the wall at a wall with room seven three three. I listened harder. Never taken mouths of fools. What the hell? Lydia leaned over and put her ear up to the wall. The whispers suddenly stopped, and I leaned closer. Suddenly there was a lot of bang on the other side. Lydia immediately recoiled and clutched her ear in pain. Someone was in there, suddenly more angry than scared. I again threw open our door and stomped over to the supposedly empty room. I banged on the door loudly, not caring who else I woke up at this point. Are you fucking kidding me? I yelled at the door. This shit isn't funny anymore. Come out of that fucking room, you asshole. Silence. And the doorknob started to turn. I don't know what I'd expect expected to happen, but it wasn't that. I backed up so far from the door that I ran to the opposite wall. When the handle had turned all the way down, something started to push from the other side. The door groaned loudly, 
but the locks held. I held my breath until the pressure on the door subsided, and the handle slowly returned to its normal position. I noticed Lydia peeking her head out of our room. She held up her hands as if to say, what happened? I think someone thinks they're funny, I answered out loud to her. She shook her head and disappeared back into our room. I knelt down on the floor and brought my head up to the carpet, peering under the door crack. It was the first time I had seen into the in, into the corner room. Here's here's the thing though, like if they, I know that like I'd still be spooked out or whatever. But at this point, if they still honestly believe that somebody keeps going into that room <clears> to <throat> fuck with them, why wouldn't they tell some anyone, someone, <coughs> anyone? I mean, it doesn't. It's not like unbelievable that someone could be sneaking uh, in there. Because Dan, around. because fuck the system, and <laughs> you take care of it yourself. Yeah, like an American. Yeah, all right, all right? fair enough. That's what although you I wasn't, do. Although, mm, I mean, yeah, what you're saying makes sense. But I feel like, like it's not like they've seen fucking dead the people thing hanging is, from the ceiling. Although, and shit at this although point. again, when I was, um, this is just me, but when I was when I was like 18 or 19 around that age, I kind of just let things slide. You know, like I didn't. I know, but really it's been go going on. on for like a month, John. Like, at yeah, some I know. Point, yeah, I, I'm. How the it. fuck do you live like that? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. But I mean, quick. it's not happening. I don't know if it's happening every single day. I think those are just events from the. Yeah, but after a month, even if it's random days, I'd still be like, all right, we need to fucking tell someone about right, this. Right, that's If fair. I still believe. Well, let's you know, see what happens. Something similar happened to me one time at college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had the bed. I was. I had the the bed next to the window, and I was sleeping one night. And I woke up at one two in the morning to take a piss. And the dorm room below me, someone was making passionate love. I heard all the moaning, and I was like, oh. Uh, and you said, there's a ghost downstairs. There's a ghost downstairs being strangled. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that, I, like, it wasn't that loud. But if something like this was happening, I'd be like, all right. There's a difference between moaning and <laughs> springs and banging on the doors and no, just saying, it strange it reminds, it reminds me of that moment in my life, a simpler time. <laughs> I'll take over well. <laughs> Room 733 was definitely a supply closet. There were chairs stacked along one wall and bed frames along the other. A few rotting mattresses were piled under one of the windows, and a thick layer of dust covered everything in the room. The windows were absolutely huge, which was something you couldn't really tell by looking up at the building. They were open as always, and I could definitely see how someone could easily climb through them to the outside ledge. The room didn't look like it had been disturbed in a couple of decades, which sent a shudder racking through my body. The moonlight, which had been providing enough light to see into the room, suddenly vanished and I saw only pitch black inside. I blinked rapidly trying to adjust my night vision. I squeezed my eyes shut, and when I opened them, a large yellow eye was looking back at me, only a few inches away from my face on the other side of the door. I screamed and woke up half the door. So, like, aliens? Cthulhu. Okay. Maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe just, it's a just love crafting. El- eldritch gods. Yeah, eldritch gods. Yep. Spooky, spooky skeletons. Yeah. Whatever. See, that's the thing. They're gonna find the next By the way, one thing that we haven't talked about is the way that the story is structured, where it has, like, it's in frames almost, where yeah. like, they're in these little boxes. Yeah. Which yeah. I kind of like. I like you know, it's, That's why I was saying it, like, it was like... separating times? Sort of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, like, breaks, it's like a, it's a, it's a timeline of events. No, well, you mentioned that it, it, it it's read like a play, it's which makes sense because yep. the, the plays sometimes you're it's written like one, one with line it's breaks. It's one setting, and we cut to different vignettes of the characters yes. engaged in dialogue-heavy scenes. Yeah. Now That's that being it. said, going back to the Lovecraft thing, I mean, a lot of his stories take place at Miskatonic University. <laughs> um, they yeah. just need to find the Necronomicon. And, and to be fair, set. and to be fair, I heard about this story from Midnight Marinara because they mm. did a radio play on this story. Mm. So actually, what William is saying makes a lot of sense. How it is kind of structured yeah. like a, yeah, it's, it kind of caters to what they were trying to do with it. Yeah, I highly recommend the episode. By the way, I'll put it in the description. Yeah, and the next day they find the Necronomicon yeah. slid under the door, yeah. and they open it up, and all of a sudden Ash and the gang show up. Yeah, like, hey, hey, we're going on a camping Kelly. trip. Hell yep. Yeah. And we end up with a chainsaw and Bruce Campbell being the man. You know, that's fine. Uh, there was no denying that things were escalating. The next morning, Lydia and I put in dorm change requests, smart idea, with resident services, and I hope for the best. In the meantime, we agreed to never be alone in our dorm room at night. Either we both spent the night at home, or neither of us did. We started spending most nights with our respective boyfriends. I told Ian everything that had happened, and he suggested I maybe talk to the campus paranormal society. Oh, no. <laughs> I hesitate. I hesitantly, hesitantly, hesitantly bleh, made an appointment, and Lydia and I met with a small, cleanly dressed kid named Craig and four of his colleagues the following Tuesday. We told them everything we could remember, every incident, no matter how small. 
Craig and the four other members of the Paranormal Society sat quietly and took notes for half an hour. It wasn't until we finished that anyone spoke. It was fucking Ghostbusters. The yeah, this is, this is strange. Is that all, Craig asked? <laughs> yes, I said slowly. Would you mind waiting out in the hall for a few minutes so that I may confer with my colleagues? <laughs> sure. Is this like Poindexter? What yeah, is happening? Yeah. With a smile and dulcet, whatever you need. The door had barely shut behind us when Lydia snorted and rolled her eyes. Let's go. Fair enough. Go where? I asked. Are you serious? Lydia, come on. We need help. I am freaking out. We haven't stayed one night in our dorm since Thursday, so this isn't something we could just brush off. Okay, she threw her hands up. Let's hear what they have to say, and then we can go over to resident services to check out on our, movie, our move requests. We loitered out in the hallway for another 15 minutes before Craig came out and asked, uh, asked up to come back and take a seat. Uh, with all the pomp and circumstance of a meeting of Parliament, Craig cleared his throat and made his diagnosis. What you're dealing with, lady, is a very angry ghost. <laughs> is that your professional opinion, Craig? What he said. I shot her a look. Yes, he stammered. A vengeful spirit. A spirit, I asked. I very much doubted that's what we were dealing with. Yes, answered one of not Craig and one of the not Craigs. That's ghost to the layperson. Not, right. not the living eye shit rolling. is this. Come on now. Jesus Christ, Lydia groaned <laughs> and rubbed her temples. Mistaking Lydia's frustration with despair, Craig rushed right into his speech. Don't be afraid, ladies. <laughs> we're going to take care of you. Nate, fucking, we need Nate for this. It's true that spirits can be quite a headache if you don't know how to exercise them, which is why it's good you came to us. Suicides almost always happen, always result in angry ghosts. They need revenge. Revenge on whom, I ask? On other students. Perhaps this particular spirit was bullied into taking his own life and now seeks to torment others. I uh, listen. We can take care of this for you right away. All we ask is a small donation to our society. <laughs> Craig continued. We honestly didn't realize that room was having this much activity. It's really exciting. Are you? Are you good to? Okay. Great. Great. Well, thank you for your time, Lydia said as she grabbed my hand and pulled me out of my chair. I'm sorry. This is bothering me a lot. Um, <laughs> this like whole thing. <laughs> yeah, this whole scene is, is fucking... baffling. <laughs> And maybe it will be salvaged Hello, somehow. I, no, I like this. I like this Good scene. Because they, go to, because they clearly aren't buying into it. It's not like they're, like, heeding their words. Okay, I get it. What's, what's the word It's called? like... It's like this horrendous group of people straight out of an early 90s sitcom. It's stereotyped. It's right? It's very stereotyped right there. And it's, like... It's, it's, this, it's the funny... It's the comedy scene. Right, and I get we have the characters, like... Winking and roaring us the audience and going, Can you get a load of these characters? We got, we got like Lydia giving us a ghost real McGillicuddy's a over here. Wink. Let's just finish this. Let's see uh, what no, happens. No, let's discuss it. Because I'm annoyed a little bit <laughs> right just now. Dylan and I wanted to say one more thing, if John would allow me. Sure. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, I was kind of bothered also by the fact that they were like, Oh, suicide. You know, it's because it's bullying. They just want revenge. Because that's how suicide Right, that's works. what. A st- a student in his position would do that. He's clearly not a professional. That's the point. That's how suicide works. Yeah, that just does. bothered me. Okay. You can't just be miserable, unhappy with your life. You no, it's... it's suicide yeah. makeover. You Dorm want... room suicide! <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> nice. You wanted to set something up for this weekend, Craig asked? Tell you what, we'll call you. Lydia hurried me up out of the room wearing a weary look, and we didn't speak again until we were, we were almost to the admin building. That was a waste of time, she said. Look, I'm not disagreeing with you, but... Beckett, tell me you didn't honestly buy into that. So you don't think it's, uh, uh, I was having trouble even saying the word. It sounds so ridiculous. A ghost? Well, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't oh. fucking, I don't fucking know. But neither, neither do they. That guy had no idea what the fuck he was talking about. I pulled my hood lower over my eyes as we stepped into the into line at the resident services desk. Let me put it this way, Lydia continued. They're playing Ghostbusters, and we're living the fucking exorcism. <laughs> Fine, I sighed. Then what do you want to do? Just keep sleeping at Mike's and Ian's until we get reassigned? I just want this to end. Lydia crossed her arms and stared straight ahead. We all wanted this to end. Even if living next to that fucking room was scary, was scary, wasn't scary. scary. It was sure as hell distracting. All right. Well, I mean, we're probably safe during daylight hours, so as long as we don't spend nights there, there we should be okay. Our room is only ghost adjacent, after all, and our new assignments will... C- We'll come through soon. I checked my watch. Fuck, it's almost two. Shit, really? I gotta go. Mike got accepted to Sigma Chi, and he's getting initiated today. Oh yeah, I forgot he rushed. The girl at the desk waved us forward. I hadn't even realized we'd reached the front of the line. 
Let me know what they say, Lydia said as she ran out the door. The girl at the desk eyed me suspiciously as I approached. Let me take over again. Hi, I'm you're the girl trying to move out of room three four uh, th uh, seven three four in Riley, aren't you? She caught me off guard. Y yeah, one of them. How'd you know? Sorry, I, I overheard you. I also know your file crossed my desk a few. I saw your file across my desk a few days ago, and I gotta ask, why are you looking to transfer rooms exactly? I was tired. I was beaten down. I didn't have the energy to think of a lie. <sighs> because shit is going on in the empty in the empty room next door, and it's really freaking us out. Noises, whispers, knocking. The other night, I saw someone. You saw someone. Yeah, in room 733. Yeah, I looked under the door. There was definitely someone in there. The girl narrowed her eyes at me for a moment, and then nodded for no particular It was Dagon. Reason. <laughs> the water god. Sure. Uh, That'll do. Yeah, all right. Well, your rooms aren't... Well, your rooms aren't ready yet, but I've pushed them through as a priority. For, now, for right now, you're stuck, though. There just isn't anywhere else to put you, I sighed. I figured as much. I'm out, she continued. And look, I've actually done a little research into the Riley suicides, and I think I can help you. Or at the very least, offer some insight. Really? I asked hesitantly. Absolutely. I'm in Taylor Hall, room 310. I'll be back I'll be back to my dorm by 4 today. Thanks, we just came from the paranormal society on campus. Ugh, say no more, Alice rolled her eyes. Yeah, so I'll definitely see you around 4. Great, Alice said, and smiled. Oh, boy. <sighs> I was early to Taylor, but then so was she. I told our story for the second time that day, and Alice wasn't afraid to interrupt with questions, though her queries didn't betray her thoughts. When, she, when I was finished, she leaned back in her chair and sighed deeply. I can't believe it, she shook her head. I'd always heard rumors, but I honestly doubted any of it to be true. I can assure you, everything I've told you is absolutely true. And how is it now, when you're there? We aren't ever there at night, but during the day we've heard scratching on the wall, really quiet whispering, and sometimes we still hear the window opening and closing. In broad fucking daylight. However, every time I look up from the street, the windows to 733 are open. Alice nodded. Well, for the record, I don't think you're in any danger. As much as it sucks, you guys are simply a casualty. That sounds like danger. You just need to stay out of room 733. I snorted. Are you kidding? I would never go in there. I believe that you believe that. Oh, well. But this thing, whatever it is, it's tricky. Manipulative. A liar. And it's smarter than you. It? I'll try not to be offended by that. Okay. You shouldn't be. What do you think it is? Something very old and very evil. Yeah. <clears throat> Dude, we're going Eldritch God. We're going out. We're going Cthulhu. There was Chekhov's Cthulhu, Cthulhu at the beginning. I've been asking John for months to read a Cthulhu style story, <laughs> and we did it. And we're doing it right now. We're I in... really hope it's true. It, it has to it be. Has to be. If it's not, we're burning this house to the ground, Dan. <laughs> you and just me. Just watch it. Just be a big ass tease, and you guys go, "What the fuck?" Whoa, it was ET the whole time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I regarded her skeptically, and then let my eyes wander around the room. I hadn't really noticed the decor before, but to say Alice had an interest in the occult was an understatement. Yep. <laughs> I can't see any situation where I would be compelled to enter that room. I know, but you have to be prepared that there may come a time when you have to make a decision about entering that room. Because what you're dealing with, it's already killed five people. Five? I thought it was three! <laughs> yeah, well, not everyone is inclined to the level of research I do. Let's see. Ellen Burnham in 1961. She jumped out the window. She was the very first. And then Tad Collinsworth in 1968. He jumped too. Marissa Grigg in 1975. She hung herself. Erin Murphy in 1979. She jumped. And then Eric Dowston in 1992. Hung himself. So I'm looking at these names and I'm trying to see if any of them <clears throat> were the names of the main characters in any of Lovecraft's work. Let us know. Did you, did you see the, the dates though? <laughs> Except for 1979. They're all seven years apart. I didn't see that. Fucking wow. Dylan! <laughs> Dylan! That was, yeah! yeah! There you go. That Dude, was true. Very <laughs> astute. See? He has his moments of brilliance. <laughs> you really... Woo! Have... Very astute. Well, Aaron Murphy took place four years, and then Eric in 1992. Yeah, so. but I'm saying besides the one in, in 1970... Uh, not 1979, Well, from 1970... From 79 to 92. Nine, yeah, 92. Like, that was the yes, only one. Yes, but if you right. take that out, it's still seven years. Right. Five suicides. How could the university still let people live there? Well, they don't, apparently. That's why it's a supply room. And back then? Well, every few years, once everyone who would remember had graduated, the room would be reassigned. This was before the internet, you know? And the incoming freshmen were clueless. But after the last one, Eric Dowston, they'd closed the entire north hall of the seventh floor and built more rooms onto the south hall. 
Well, I mean, it, it makes sense logically that every it would be around seven years because if you're doing a whole set of students, that's four years right there before anybody remembers what the fucking room yeah. is. So. so what does it want? Now it shrugged. Chaos? Death? Souls? What? <laughs> Who knows? No one even knows what it is. There are just these little snippets of fucking bonkers <laughs> that drift through. Yeah. It's like totally normal. Hey, how was your day? Oh, good. I had lunch. I had ham. I had anyway, turkey. Anyway, there's a demon. There's an eldritch god who's trying it, to summon Cthulhu. It's in there. He yeah, demands it, the souls of his enemies. Okay, cool. And I'll... I, you had rye, you were saying? Yeah, it was yeah. rye. Was like, <laughs> you know, it, like, they just trickle, like, moments of just pure bananas just yeah. kind of so drift how was, through. How was your dinner today, honey? I had I had um, some potatoes. And I had some, some fish. God, I really love spirits in the occult. <laughs> it's insane. Okay, so what do we know? We know it's somehow bound to that room, though it seems to have minimal influence just outside of it. We know that everyone who ever died was alone at that time, and we know that it's a trickster. Why? Why do we That's know these That's what things? we know. Okay, can I just say real quick, <laughs> this game, like, lampooned the stereotypical, like, person who knows all the paranormal exposition not like three paragraphs ago and, and then, they're literally right, and then doing it now it's pulling a goddamn fucking pokemon strangled red right you now. can't make fun of something and then do it right five right. minutes later <laughs> right. i'm sorry you go ahead no Dang, you're this is really long right. you're, right. you're right um it wasn't enough why do you think they do it i asked quietly the victims i nodded all I know is what's rumored to be in the evidence files. All the suicides were found with pictures or writings that were considered unspeakable at the time. They contain horrible evil things that would make you physically sick to read or see, they say. And these people, they drew them? They wrote that stuff? Yep, whatever's in that room drove them mad. And we compiled all of it into a neat little book made of human flesh and bound <laughs> human That's blood. not in the story. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. Um, no. Let us uh, dream. That's fucking terrifying. Have you guys considered getting somebody to bless the room? Jesus. Yes. No. Well, <laughs> you'll have a hard time getting him, but perhaps some other sort of early person. Okay. No, I mean, Jesus. You're talking about an exorcism? Alex shrugged. Maybe. The room in the 70s was that all this started with a Ouija board game gone wrong in 61. Really? That shit's made by Hasbro. <laughs> Not in the 60s, it wasn't. Anyway, it's just a rumor. The only people on campus who kn would know is Tom Moyne, an admin. I've tried to talk to him before, but he refuses to see me. Did he go here in 1961? Yes. And he was staying in Riley. We need to talk to him. I need to know what the fuck is happening. I won't be able to live the rest of my life as, well, as a well-adjusted person. I suppose we could try to chase him down on campus. Can we talk to him tomorrow? We can try. So it's like... It, it, yes, Dan. It's, it's like, is it an ancient evil? Or is it a, a religious evil? Is it Satan? Is well, it a Cthulhu well, monster? Well, Dan, we know it's a tricky evil. We know it's a Loki type. We know it's a it's sneaky a it's little a lucky devil. Seven one. Let's yeah. go with that. <laughs> it's a little tricky devil. That's what we're looking at here. Like the little Elmer Fudd-ass Martians Whoa. from the old school Looney Tunes. Marvin Martian? No, no. Remember that, like, really old... Okay, maybe I'm the only one who's seen this cartoon. Probably. Where Bugs Bunny is, like, making World War II airplanes, and there's a little gremlin who keeps breaking the airplane. Oh, yeah, isn't Hitler in that one? Maybe. I don't... It's hard to say. Yeah, I think so. So I much Hitler that. that it just all bleeds together. <laughs> but I remember the little gremlin man who was like... Rah, 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 and he'd, like, break up the ship. And then that. maybe it was Bugs... Maybe it wasn't Bugs Bunny. But whoever was the protagonist was like, rah, my ships or planes or whatever. <laughs> no, wasn't Duck Dodgers? Dude, no, it was not Duck Dodgers. No, no, no. There's the dumb century. The, no, there's a dumb moment. For Dylan, me. No, you're sorry. mixing continuities here, and we're going <laughs> to need to keep it clear. All right. That's, All right, go that's ahead, fun. Dylan. Mr. Moyne wouldn't see us the day or the next. We tried to catch him out on his lunch hour, and then again while he was leaving work. But he got around us every time. It was soon clear that the old man was actively avoiding us. Lydia and I had seen little of each other since we'd continued to sleep in other dorms. I went back to our room twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Usually the other room was silent, but that didn't make me feel better. I could always sense something on the other side of the wall, somehow watching me. It felt like the calm before the storm. The Thursday before Halloween, I came back to the dorm to shower in the, in the evening, much later than usual. I'd seen Lydia that afternoon, and she informed me that she had enough clothes stored at Mike's to last until graduation, so I knew I'd be there alone. Smart. I showered down the hall in the safety of the bathrooms and then walked back to my room to change. I was supposed to, I was supposed to meet Ian in a half an hour to head out to a party and I was I wanted to get out and get out of here as quick as possible. Since the silence was unnerving me, I threw my iPod on the dock, docking station and tuned up AC/DC. 
I got dressed and then stood in front of the mirror to dry my hair. I flipped my head over and blow dried upside down, upside down to try to give my hair some volume. When I flipped my head back up and shut off the blow dryer, I immediately noticed the silence in the room. But that wasn't all I noticed. I wasn't in my dorm anyway, anymore. Behind me was reflected the dusty bed frames and large open windows of room 733. I spun around in a panic to find that I was actually standing in my own room. I looked back at the mirror to see that 733 still reflected there. A slight movement behind me was all it took to make me run. I grabbed my purse and phone and I fled from my I would, room. I would have Slammed the door never, behind me. On the elevator ride down, I called Alice. I would have never. Ever I can't. Gone I can't do it anymore. I said when she picked up. I can't go back in the room any like, room again. I can't ever go back. What happened? I told her. Jesus, what do you want to do? She asked. I need to talk to someone who knows what the fuck is going on. Is Tom Moyne the only person we know was here in 1961? The only one I know of. Maybe we can get him on his way in in tomorrow morning. We'll just corner him and refuse to move until he tells us something. He comes in at 6.30, according to the schedule I have. Do you want to meet me outside the Starbucks in the atrium? Fuck yeah, I do. I have a class at 7.30, but I'll blow it off. Okay, see you then. I wasn't usually much for parties, but I was glad that I was going to one that night. As soon as, as, soon as we got there, I asked Ian to get me a drink. Since I wasn't usually much of a drinker, he gave me a raised eyebrow. One drink? <laughs> I guess shy ball. girlfriend. No woman of mine. <laughs> Said Ian. I don't the think jerk. That was the implied thing. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I gave him a brief synopsis of what had happened earlier, hoping he wouldn't think I was crazy. Ian made me a scotch and coke. It was the first of many. They would like this girl. Around midnight, <laughs> I went to have a cigarette and checked my phone. I had a voicemail from kids. Lydia left back at 11.04. Hey, Becca, listen, I just I just had a huge fucking fight with Mike. Well, he, I guess his frat decided to, that for Halloween this year, all the new brothers have to spend the night in the suicide room. In our dorm, I just, I can't fucking take it. He knows what's going, what's been going on with us, and he's still agreed to do it. He's now trying to convince me that, that Sigmund Shai is behind all the stuff going down in room 733, because they've been trying to drum up the buzz for the Halloween deal. I can't. I hit end and threw my phone in my bag. No wonder Lydia was pissed. This was not good. Not good at all. I found Ian inside and asked him to take me home. He was suddenly very stressed, very tired, and very drunk. When the alarm went off at 6 a.m., it took everything I had to pull myself out from bed. I got dressed in the clothes I had worn the night before and shuffled my way across campus to the uh, trarium. Ugh, 6 a.m. after a, and hungover. Mm -hmm. God. College. That's rough. <laughs> Alice was already there with a black coffee in hand. MVP. Yeah. I figured you'd need this, she laughed. How'd you know? Your texts. I texted you last night? Yeah, at about one. You told me about Sigma Chi. Oh, God, yeah. I pushed my sunglasses higher up my nose and pulled my hood lower over my eyes. Those guys are idiots. Remember how I told you that it's crafty? Well, what if the point of messing with you was to make 733 provocative? You know, to seduce people into going inside. No one has been in that room for years. Can you imagine how hungry that thing is? This person discusses this unknown... As if it knows. This is weird. she knows. It is Which leads weird. me to believe she's that she Cthulhu. might know something. She's Cthulhu. Yeah, she's Cthulhu. Do you she's think, the father of Dagon. Do you think they're really at risk, I asked, as I sat down the steps of the admin building? Yeah, in fact, the only thing they have going for them is that all those suicide victims were alone at the time of their deaths. So, it'll be less powerful for all of them there? Theoretically, we would know a lot more if we knew what it was. And we can't know what it is without knowing how it got there. And that's why we need Moen. It's like she keeps going like, oh, but I don't know. I swear, I don't know. But I, I don't know, but I have it's information, funny, but I don't this know. Seems well, like she's been, st I mean, to be fair, she's been studying it, but yes, yeah, I think she does know No, it's our, making a lot of assumptions. Our, our lord and savior, he's a tricky crap, I mean, bad, 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 evil, <laughs> bad, tricky's evil. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Who, who, who are we talking about? Remember what it's a Alice? strange character, but I don't think it's a character right. I wouldn't but see. Remember what Alice said, that the evil spirits were going to get her to go into the room? Yeah, well... Oh, the, the evil spirits. Alice is the evil spirit. Alice is the evil spirit. I like this interpretation. Yeah. It's hungry for souls. Okay. Give me your soul. What time was he supposed to get here? Actually, 20 minutes ago, Alice said grimly. It was another half an hour before we resigned ourselves to the fact that Mr. Moen had snuck around us as usual. We went to the front office hoping to beg again for an appointment with him anyway. The woman at the admin desk regarded us coldly. Tom isn't coming in today. Or any other day, for that matter. He quit yesterday. 
Looks like you won't be harassing him anymore. Mm-hmm. Wanting to talk to him. <laughs> the fuck is this? We weren't harassing him, I said. We just desperately need to talk to him. All right, not helping your case. <laughs> and we still do, added Alice. Double down. <laughs> well, you won't get any of his personal information from me, she said snidely and walked away. Why is this woman the bad guy? I like the, I like the idea that she's like some old woman that's been like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, these people sound insane. Yeah. <laughs> Without Tom Mullen, there's nothing left to do. Alice, fuck, I can't go back into that room. Well, then I guess it's good your transfers came through. They did? Yep. I got the notice when I checked my work email this morning. You're going to Morton and Lydia is going to Tinsley. Oh, thank God. I thought you'd be happy about that. I also convinced my boss not to assign anyone else to room 734. Thank fuck. The only thing is, you won't be able to move until Monday. I can last through the weekend, especially now yeah. that the end is in sight. I yeah. have to tell Lydia. Can you? I opened my phone to pull up Lydia's number, but my attention was caught by a red one badge over the voicemail logo. I hit play. It was the rest of the mess from last night. Even look at his dumb fucking face anymore, so I'm going to head home. Don't worry about me, I'll be okay. I'm drunk enough to sleep through any bullshit from next door. I'm just so fucking pissed off right now. I would honestly rather deal with dumb shit Beth than Michael my parents and must be siblings because I'm not fucking retarded Benson. <laughs> Let's hang out tomorrow. Oh, Love ya. no! The classic ended the voicemail too soon maneuver. Right. Well, I don't think that's too tropey. No. Yet. She was drunk. Yet. The message ended. Oh, god damn it. Alice gave me a questioning look. Lydia spent the night in her dorm. Alice cringed. She's safe, though, right? Did, 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 did we get the, did we get her soul? Did we, I mean, did, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> did the Lord feast on her soul? I mean, is she okay? Is she gone? I'm oh, so, god. that's terrible. Oh, I'm not opening up my blog. <laughs> <laughs> Alice made an orgasmic look with her face. <laughs> That's not what it says. <laughs> as long as she doesn't go into room 733. She won't. I thought of the always open large windows of the corner room. If nothing else, the mere thought of those would keep Lydia the hell out of that room. Good. Well, since we have nothing else to do, do you want to go look at theology books in the library? It's pretty much the only thing open right now. Sure, I shrugged. I don't have another class until 10. You go look at theology and books I can't... and she fucking... She pulls out, like, the Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> This was written by Lovecraft. <laughs> this was written by H.P. Lovecraft, wonderful science fiction horror writer, although very racist, but whatever. It's it's fine, because he created God. <laughs> the little old lady who sat behind the library's checkout desk must have been a thousand years old. Absolutely. Ms. Stapley's eyes were small and watery, and her skin looked like it was melting off her skull, and I'm mean to old people. Apparently. Every time Jesus. we introduce a new character, it gets more and more fucking Lovecraft. Yep. <laughs> Still... She was nice and knowledgeable, and she sent us in the right direction for books on demonology. Though she gave us a curious look as she did. Why would a college library have books on demonology? We're powering through it, Dan! Okay. That's what we're doing! <laughs> there wasn't much, so you're in the clear. We read everything we could, but it either wasn't relevant or wasn't in English. I mean, why was it? We returned to her desk 30 minutes later. Uh, do you have anything on the occult? The occult? Ah, her voice trailed off. Yes, I do. Over there to the left of the reference section. Okay, Good thanks. Good to see Granny Royce got some work in fucking... <laughs> Sorry, I'm too hungover to use the Dewey Decimal System, I said. I don't think she likes the look of us, Alice whispered as we walked away. Our looks are our subject matter. Probably neither. <laughs> she whispers... All, uh, the ahead, old librarian man. whispers... She know, they know. Yeah, yeah. They know. She yeah, like right. Whispers into like a bead or something. She looks under assuming her desk like, so you're guys, like the corpses. So assuming you're like, you're like parody that Alice is like the... Orgasmic. She's part Alice of the is the of Alice Cthulhu, is the spirit. The is librarian the, is like the the defender. Like, yeah. don't hang out with Alice. Alice. I just, it's weird. Like, there, I don't, Alice of the Not Wonderland. Okay, so we don't know. We don't know what the name of the university, right? And we don't know where it is. No, no. Because if they fucking tell us at one point it's in it's in Rhode Island, I know for a fact this is a fucking right. story. No, it's like that mm-hmm. moment in uh in the Mouth of Madness, John yeah. Carter's fantastic. Little Craftian movie. Yeah. Where the old lady at the original looks under her desk and the old man's like naked and chained up and yeah, she just like yeah. smiles and his face is all fucked. It's. Watch yeah. that movie. Yeah. Uh, within the hour we were. Watch that movie, but before you watch that movie, watch Street Fighter 1994. <sighs> within the hour we were back up at her desk having <sighs> struck out again. We could tell she was getting noisier out and some narrowed suspiciously at us as we approached. Oh, sorry, do you know where we could find something on seances or Ouija boards or. Now listen, girls. Miss Stapley stood up from her desk and looked over her glasses at us. I really hope this is for class. It is, I said. It's not, Alice answered simultaneously. It's personal research. Research? What kind of research? Look, we're not going to mess with a Ouija board or anything. 
Good. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Stapley smoothed her pleated pants and sat back down. Because I can't have that sort of thing going on here again. Again? Al slashed on. Mm-hmm. The old, <laughs> the old <laughs> ones. I Uh-oh. spit all over my phone. <laughs> Looks like we got a mystery, gang. <laughs> the, the older woman said, so, what the fuck does he say? Zoinks! Zoinks, the Zoinks, older, Zoinks cube. The older woman suddenly looked very uncomfortable and started fishing with a stack of books on her desk. Mm, we may have something on seances in... Miss Stapley, we're researching what happened in Riley in 1961, Alice interrupted. And also what's been happening there ever since. Well, it's no secret, is it? A student committed suicide in that room. Dreadful, but not unheard of on a university campus. Five students, I corrected her. But you know that, right? Alice was suddenly talking very fast, because you sound like you're well-versed in the story. Please tell us how this started, and we might be able to end it. End it? Oh, no. Mrs. Stigley's voice became quieter, but more concentrated. Don't be so arrogant, young lady. You can't end it. People have always died in that room, and they always will. There's no end to it, so you'd best stay far away from it. But maybe if we knew how this all started... It started just as you think it did. But everyone that was involved is either very old or very dead by now. Just stay away from that room. Concentrate on your studies. I leaned over her desk. Well, I'd love to, but they assigned my friend and me to the room next door. Maybe you could forget all about the suicides, but we can't. It won't fucking let us. Young lady, I never forget. Mrs. Stapley's voice was even quieter now. My friend Ellen was the very first to be killed in that room. Dun, dun, dun! She was my very best friend, and not a night goes by that I don't imagine her wiggling out that tiny window, standing upon the cold ledge in her bare feet, and jumping off the seventh floor of that building. Well, she slipped. Alice sighed. I'm really sorry, I didn't know. Yes. Well, these are old world wounds, my dear. Now, girls, I suggest you request a room reassignment immediately. No one should be living on the seventh floor of that building, and that's all I'm going to tell you about it. Good, Bill. Alice sighed, but resigned herself to a nod. We wouldn't learn anything more here. Still, it was quite a breakthrough. At least we had some information now. What? What information? <laughs> they got nothing! <laughs> I Literally nothing. They got nothing! <laughs> Alice walked away, and I made... Well, they did learn that she... her That was her friend. Yeah, but... That was it. They, they got didn't a, learn anything they, they about have, the fucking... Right. They found a new senior citizen to shake down. That was <laughs> the extent of their success. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good lord. Alice walked away, and I made, to fo- I made to follow her, but my feet wouldn't move. Something was bothering me. A small yet poignant word that had... Word had been buried in Miss Stapley's story. A word that suddenly seemed very important. Um, eh, Miss Stapley, I asked the tired old woman at the desk. Why did you refer to the windows in 733 Tiny? No, it's not. Because, it's, it's because so, I've seen so, those, yeah. oh, because I've seen those windows and they're, and they're huge, like five feet tall. Dear, you're thinking of the corner room. That's the supply closet. Room 733 is next door to that. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! <laughs> no, no, I, I stuttered. That's room 734. Yes, well, it is now. Dun, dun, dun. Danny, you're going to have to slow your roll on these dun dun duns, all right? When they built the additional rooms on, onto the South Hall. They moved all the room numbers no, down. Her oh, it's fine. Right. Whatever. Oh, my God. I suddenly felt very hot and very dizzy. That sneaky fucker. Alice whispered next to me, her skin oh, paling. The demon? Like, what? Lydia, we took off across the campus at a, at a dead room, at a dead run. Witnessed only by the few bleary-eyed students on their way to morning class. Morning classes. When Riley finally came into view, I stumbled on the pavement as my blood turned to ice. From our vantage point, we could clearly see the windows of the corner room were closed. The first and only time I had ever seen that way. And the window to my room was open. We ran in the lobby, pushing past several late sipping latte ug- latte sipping <laughs> ug- there's boot no wearing... umlaut that's why I was confused <laughs> latte sipping ug- boot wearing freshman who had just gotten off the elevator I hit 7 and watched the doors close more slowly than they ever had before I leaned against the wall trying to steady my breath no hold on let me stop you right there I'm, I'm sorry. up the stairs damn it no 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 let me, let me stop you right there and I know we've been making jokes that Alice is in on it She's been researching this for years now. How the fuck did she not know that information? For real. Unless she's actually in on it. I mean, either she sucks at researching this thing she's obsessed with. Or she's the devil. <laughs> right, right. Or she's right. literally Satan. Yes, right. thank you, Dylan. That's right. what I was building to. How the fuck oh, so did she not know that? <laughs> Unle- <laughs> unless, unless she's in on it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? What part and of that, that frat joke? And, for, and for me... As we're leaving, I would have been like, how the fuck did you not know that? Like, that's the first thing in my head yep. if I was the narrator. Alice, is that a tentacle coming <laughs> out from under your shirt? 
No. I'm a cat. Meow. Shit. I'm a human. <laughs> the jig is up. Do you have... Is there an additional eye in the back of your head that's popping out? Is that yellow? <laughs> Alice, how the fuck did this happen? I don't know. fish in here. <laughs> Alice, how the fuck did this happen? I don't know. I don't fucking know. She's been in there all night, Alice, in our room, alone. Alice shook her head but had nothing to say. When the doors finally opened at floor 7, we saw a quite deserted hallway. I ran toward my room with Alice right behind me. Round in the corner, I threw open my door, hoping it wasn't locked, and it wasn't. Lydia looked back at me, and one, and for one breathless moment, a cruel glimmer of hope crossed over her tear-streaked face. But it was too late. The next second, she leaned oh, forward fuck. so slightly, and she was gone. She screamed the entire way down. Shh. Alice ran to the ledge where Lyd Lydia had just been while I stood motionless. She stuck her head out the window and looked down just as a different kind of screaming started from the bottom floor. Alice closed her hand over her mouth and pulled her back, head back into the room as tears of shock ran down her ghost white face. They were actually tears of orgasmic joy, by the way. <laughs> the screaming from the outside got louder as more people saw what remained of my best friend on the cold pavement. Oh. I leaned back against the dresser and slumped to the floor. A falling death. Lydia never wanted a falling death. And then and then I heard Alice out of the corner of the room go, Do <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, dude, are you summoning something? Like <laughs> shit? <laughs> I, absent -mind I absent mindedly picked up one of the pictures that were strewn all over the floor. It was a picture of Lydia's mother. She was dead. I picked up another picture. It was Lydia's baby sister. She was dead too. There were dozens of pictures just like it all over the floor. Lydia has has been busy late has been busy last night. As for the things depicted in them, I cannot tell you. Lydia was t a talented artist, and I only saw a few before I got sick on the floor next to me. This okay, so this is kind of cool. Like, I like the what, no, whatever no. this thing is is like fucking got in her mind and made her draw pictures of all of her dead relatives all night. That's, that's, cool. that's a clever idea. I'm on board. That's clever. As as a narrative device and just as an evil fucking Also, they kind of they foreshadow. They, they had that brief dialogue between the two when they were arguing how she mentioned that I'm an art major, you're the law major. Right. Go lay down the law. And they right. had her drawing Cthulhu at the beginning, right, too. Right, right. A little right. bit more of a... So that was that was clever. I like that. Pretty Not to cool. mention the fact that the night before that they were talking about going to room 733 and all of a sudden she just goes go storming right, back home right. into what we found out is room 733. Yeah, right. I also like that device where the the frat boy is taking the other frat boy to room 733 yeah. and she gets pissed at him because of, just, he knows what's yeah, right. going on and, he, and she's like, what the fuck, man? Fuck I like that, though. Yeah. I was just standing in the doorway yelling something down the hall. I don't know what she was saying because all I could hear was the high-pitched whine in the room. Suddenly, a piece of paper slid out from under the crack in the closet door and glided across the floor towards me. I picked it up and studied it for a moment. This was drawn by Lydia, too, but it wasn't like the others. It was a picture of the closet from my exact vantage point. In the drawing, the door was cracked, and there was something looking back from the darkness. I put the paper down and studied the closet. The door was cracked enough, just like in the picture. I squinted my eyes and tried to see what was inside. Just as I started to distinguish the defined lines of the long face looking back at me, Alice pulled me to my feet. We need to get out of here, I thought I heard her say. Fuck! I want to know what it is! <laughs> I never went back into that room. My parents moved my things, and I spent the rest of the semester in an apartment off campus. I transferred to an out-of-state school for my spring semester and finished my degree there. Can I, to be fair, I'm gonna, this, this is kind of fucked up to say, but like... She wouldn't have to worry about her GPA anymore. The college was just gonna fucking give her good grades at this point, right? Like, does, isn't that how that? Well, that's the old trope, right? Well, that's the trope. That's the but trope. She, I mean, but we got a very real Cthulhu thing in yeah, the room, well, so I mean. Also, she went off campus. They don't care. I know, but <laughs> just making a really, really dark joke. There. Every it's night, fine. I dream of Lydia pulling herself through that tiny window, shimming out onto the cold ledge, standing up, and knowing that there's nothing between her body and the terrifying abyss in front of her. I watch her look down seven stories to the black pavement below and realize, though not accept, her terrible fate. I see her blind horror across her, f across her familiar features. I hear her, wildly I hear her wildly pounding heart, desperately trying to race through every beat of life she should have lived, and knowing it only has seconds. I watch her look back at me, and I watch her fall. It's been nine years since that night, and every fall semester for nine years, I've called resident services to see which dorms are open for new student assignments. Riley has, is always open. The seventh floor is closed. This year, life and work have gotten in the way, and I called much later than usual. I was put on hold immediately. Resident services, a man finally answered. Were you the one asking about the open rooms in Riley? Yes, that's me. 
were entirely filled up, and there's a waiting list for Riley. But as it happens, you actually have great timing. I make no promises, but we may be able to get you in. We just had an approval this morning. Approval for what? I said slowly. We're opening up the seventh floor. Oh, no. Oh, bum, bum, bum. And that was room 733. I think it was decent. I liked it. I liked it. I liked okay. the story. And you know what? I hate it's to say fun. it. It's fun. It's fun. Right. I hate to say it because we bitched about revealing too much, but I really want to know what's in the fucking room. No, that was good. That it, it, A quality moment of restraint, I'd say. Fair enough. Which I think is indicative of quite a bit of that mythos. In that a lot of it's never shown. Mm. Or it depends on the work. It depends, depends on the work. very a lot much of the time on the work. I saw this horrific thing beyond description, and I almost went mad, so I ran away. And that's it. Right. You know? Right. So it's kind of, you don't, don't tell. You right. know? Right. And that does a and good job right. of that. And I mean, I'm going to say, I pulled back in a little on my initial dialogue assertion. I'm not going to say it's a Sorkin mix. I'm thinking more Kevin Smith. <laughs> Honestly, the amount of pop culture references, That's very, true. very Smithian. Jay and Tom Bob sitting out in front of the dorm room. Exactly. Trying to Man, they me. Ghostbusters and we the Exorcist, you know? <laughs> yeah, Why yeah. wouldn't they get off the Death Star? You know, we're clerks <laughs> all of a sudden. But I it's almost, fine. If I could rewrite this story, I would have taken out Alice, and I would have taken out the Society, and I would have had it so that Lydia just wants to get the fuck out, and she begins, she gets interested in trying to, like, maybe salvage this and try to find out what's going on on her own. And she comes across information that regards to the fact that they're actually in room 734 I... this whole time. Because that's scary. I like that premise. I like the premise that all this time they think they're next to the thing that's scaring them. And, and that but is still... all this time they are in the haunted room. It's in room. the room with us. That's still right. an effective twist. Right. 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 Although... And that's fine. It's weird that it wasn't. It wasn't. It the didn't closet. bear fruit until they realized it. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what like happens. Con- the well, it was well, the day though. Like Lydia slept in there all night, so it's it's just a series of whatever. But I don't. I don't necess- I think taking out the society is good. I don't think necessarily removing. You absolutely Alice. leave Alice. Alice was great. Alice was great. It's just some of her dialogue threw us off because she acted like she knew a lot more. Then she, and that's fine. That's a maybe little that was, Maybe that was her trying to over a red it. herring. I keep using the word. I wish she was just trying to overdo it to like. I it's was, possible. We were looking through this in the, at this through the eyes of Rebecca, correct? Yeah, Rebecca. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Rebecca. So from what I'm gathering from this, because all throughout the course of the story, she was being told about this whole st- suicide room, and as she kept finding out more and more things, it progressed, started progressively getting, she started finding out even more and more. Right. So subconsciously, she kept thinking about it. And the fear. And the fear kept is yeah. gripping her, thus making Alice be acting like a shady character. And then, you know, it filling up her and her roommates' heads about this thing subconsciously to the point where they didn't know. And then when she finally finds out that it So you're happens. saying that Alice is, in fact, the disciple of this malevolent spirit? Well, I'm not saying no, she's a disciple. I think no, she's I'm joking. joking. I'm saying more lines of Rebecca had been building, has been right. building this thing up subconsciously. Because if they didn't know about think about it. If no one told them about it, do you think it would... And it kept Same escalating. It kept escalating right. as the more she kept thinking about right. it, and the more things kept this happening. She, two, if, the RA had, if the RA had never said anything about Room 733, do you think any of this subconsciously would happen? Well, they would have found out eventually, but I think like trying actively seeking out answers, I think you're yeah. absolutely right. Because they'd be like, yeah. what's going on here, okay? Right. Just One of the big things. things in a lot of Lovecraft fiction the, is that descent into madness kind yeah. of pastiche and i think that's very yeah, much that, in that's play here exactly what happened too we're just missing a dream sequence <laughs> yeah exactly right is. yeah exactly and i mean be i happy, yeah. i really liked alice i mean she started off weak i thought that was kind of cheesy as i said earlier where they're ma- where they're like lampooning this trope right. and then alice plays it out you know the ex exposition dump but her exposition wasn't helpful you know what i mean I mean, it kind of fills us in on the Lovecraft mythos a bit, but I wouldn't even not say that really, because, right? I wouldn't even say that because we had this idea of what it was, and I think that idea is infiltrating the actual story itself, because we kept making jokes about it's not really... So you're saying we're putting more into it than is actually there. Right. We're yeah. not... I don't think this... It could have just We been... kept making jokes about Cthulhu, and, and I think we were in that mindset because the drawing at the beginning, this is really not a Lovecrafting story. It's I think really the author not. might want it to be, though. It's possible, but it's very, to me... I think 
where it's very it's very it's very on the outer fringes yes. of fringe fringe love, at best right you're not wrong at all right. it's very light on if we knew, that it's not heavy-handed in that regard well which is which is why i wanted to know what this thing was was or at least get some kind of recognition of what it could be if we saw like a yeah, mechanical or like a, you know a fish bait or a something go, a goat's hoof right or something i would i would can i'd be like okay this is trying to be lovecraft but because there's not enough i feel like we're imprinting our own shit on it yeah maybe that's the point i think is that better though is it better for us to be able to imprint about what we think it might no. be no just... yes because a good it, it, it's left open to interpretation i like that but i think the story i feel i just get the feeling like the story wasn't really going for that vibe i think it's a clever story um for the most part very simple but there are very clever moments like we talked about um I liked it. It's so. a fun, snappily written, straightforward story. Yeah, the dialogue. It's got a yeah. fun little twist. Yep. Fun characters, fun dialogue, and it's easy to follow and keep track of. Yep. And you stay invested. It's good. What were you saying? Could, it could have just been like more of a, you know how people at college will just make up a joke and say, "Oh, this is what happened to Ooh, Spooky Scary." Well, that's what and I then, mean. Yeah, like yeah. People, like we were saying, like the descent into madness in such way, and then just depicting on what, like as we as we were progressing reading the story. We kept thinking of like, oh, is it a Cthulhu monster? Is it this? Is it? And you see, start seeing us starts going going with her into this madness, thinking that oh, it could it be a monster like this? Could be like this? Authorial intent. Yeah. So like when yeah. you're reading it, you're also being dragged, sucked into this. Right. Well, thinking, that's like you're thinking it, it could be this, it could be this, or what if it's this? And when in reality, it's probably just nothing. Well, but we're we're being brought on to this descent of madness, and we're on along for the ride. I made that connection when you introduced the idea the first time and now you're expanding on it. But I, I think that, that would be cool. And that's a cool authorial intent. That's an awesome interpretation. If that, that's fucking masterwork, if that's valid. <laughs> but I think like, I don't know. I, I just feel like, well, you kind of felt like you were, well, you felt like you were along for the ride because you felt right. like when you're hearing the story, invested, it's right. from her, it's from her point of view. Which is more than I can say for some of the shit that we fucking write, but whatever. Yeah. But like you see, like we were no, I mean, point of view. So like as you see, it's like just getting dark. Either this darker. was written with the intent to take us along the ride and thought Which processes feel, yeah. we went on, yeah. or it wasn't at all, you know. And it's probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah. You know, I think we really. I think, it's, of, you I think it's clever <laughs> enough to be its own thing. I know that you've mentioned Lovecraft a lot. I have not. I have not read a lot of Lovecraft, but I maybe if I read a lot, a list of stories I could give to you. <laughs> right. Actually, Sam, my I friend have... Sam has the complete my copy Fucking of his complete work. Pass the tome up. this yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, as far as what I was Ooh, saying what? earlier about yeah. uh, cutting out things, I don't know. I like. I mean, Alice is okay. I'm not a huge fan of Alice, to be honest. I mean, I mean, she's fine. If I, it's fine. I like. I think I would have taken the paranormal activity thing. I would have kept that, mm -hmm. and I would have cut it out to the point where Lydia wants to pull um, Rebecca away. I would have just had them pull her away. I, I just think, skip that whole thing with Craig and the dialogue. And I, th the... I think the the weak, the actually the weakest link of the story is is Lydia as a character because we really don't. I mean, we get some at the beginning, but I just didn't really have like a, an emotional impact when she jumped out the window. Yeah. Well, we don't see her right. Much. She she kind of early disappeared on we, like early on. And early we get on, a, you compared him. You right. compared her to William, actually. and we get right, and we get a on. sense of who she is. But I feel like in order to have her jump out the window at the end, and for us to be like in right. shock, but we like need a little I, bit it more. is like, it does I, kind of imply that um, because of this incident, like as time's going mm -hmm. on, you notice that Rebecca and um, Lydia are actually spending less time together. Right, they've intentionally been, they've been though, intent. because of the fucking. Of course, room. but that's what the that's what the perspectives are. Well, like I've been, I don't know, keep on repeating myself with this, but like I was saying before, like how we were brought for a ride. Just think about it. You know, she Rebecca's getting so much invested into this hoax that she doesn't. She hasn't had time to hang out with Lydia at all. She's so devoted. Early on, devoted. Did, she, but yeah, early on, yes. No, but get she gets so saying, she gets so devoted to the subject matter of Room Seven Three yeah. that you know what? Well, like, you have just, to be. Yeah, but now like she's be. not hanging out with with Lydia. She's hanging out with Alice. They're trying to figure out what's or going Ian, on. Yeah. Where Lydia is living her normal life and stuff, so well, she's out of the picture. Well, as normal as in right. she's involved yeah. trying to get out. It would have. I'm, yeah. I'm, and I agree. It would have just been nice to get a little bit more perspective on Lydia and maybe have a couple more scenes with them together before. 
Kabam. You know, she jumps out the fucking window. Yeah, maybe and whatever more, this thing is. Maybe adding one more Lydia scene and maybe taking out the paranormal activity scene might. And we're talking about it like it's a fucking play or a movie. It's, it's a good diversion. Yeah. Right. Again, I'll say it. Listen to the Midnight Marinara take on this, yeah. where they voice act this out and mm-hmm. they add their own things to it to make it like a play, and you know, it's sure. good. Or hey, I would say instead of it being Becca's fault that she separated from Lydia, maybe it was Alice's plan all along no, look, to the split player. them up. Yep. She dragged Becca down the rabbit hole because well, Becca Alice was just safe. thinking this is kind of fucked up. It was Lydia who sent her on the like real paranormal goose chase because she wasn't feeling validated Alice, at first, yeah, right? Yeah, sorry, but Becca at first didn't feel validated because he's the paranormal club and they're a joke. She's like, well, Lydia this was kind of dumb. She they the neither thing. of them liked it, John. Yeah, but Rebecca, yeah, but one Rebecca was step. entertaining. She the idea, was right? entertaining it, and but when they charged a fee, one. they were so both like, "Fuck this! This is a joke." Right. right. And so she's at her like That's nadir funny. at that moment in terms of like yeah. feeling confident about this whole concept, right. and then Alice steps in. So conveniently, from right behind and the that's, desk, and, that's why, and, and yeah. she sends her down the occult hole. Right, and, and Alice is shoving that tentacle back down. Right, her exactly. Alice just to be is safe. going into the Wonderland. No, no, no. And I the think, like John was saying a lot, that he didn't like Alice, and I think I totally get what you're saying because I feel like I like what we've turned Alice into right, right, right. more so right. than the than real what she Alice. Is, right. Like I, I totally understand that we have very much imprinted yeah. on Alice more so than anything else. This crazy Cthulhu minion character, which is really probably not authorial <laughs> intent so no, much, but it's a fun read and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> right. And it's my head canon. But I get where you're coming from. No, that's fine. That's uh, fine. Um, I had something else to say I forgot, though. Um, also, props for being a no-sleep story that's not broken into 37 fucking oh, parts. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Jesus Christ. I almost picked my nose today. Just post the whole story, people. Finish your work. Don't be well, all hey, Penn piecemeal in this shit yeah, out. Pen does it a piecemeal. Yeah, but that was also written in such an episodic format that it functioned effectively. Okay. Most no sleeps are had, not. I had much more of an emotional response to it because we were with that character for fucking well, six stories. Well, it was three times as long. Yeah. So, I mean, my God. Right. And we also, were there forever. Right. And also, I, don't, I did finish the pen pal book. So it's pretty good. I have it now. I did like it when I can. You fucking read it, and we'll talk about it. I'm never gonna read it. No, me and John will read it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So final thoughts. Um, two thumbs up for me. I like the story. I kind of like Alice a little bit. I think Alice is as far as the as far as objectively for the story. I think Alice is the weak point. I think they would have been kind of cool if Alice oh. could have gone her own little not Alice. Um, if Becca could have gone her own little adventures, maybe even with Lydia to figure out what's going on. And Lydia gets fed up with it, and they have like a separation. Right. Because then it would have. Because then. Because I agree with you. Because then it would have been like there's there's a reason there's a disconnect. We're doing so much fucking. I, they don't understand what's happening. They just heard no, Dylan no, sing. No, no, no. <laughs> you said you said go. They go their own way. Because no, the, 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 does it mean you do that? that? You, if you bring up Fleetwood Mac, we're dropping some yeah, Fleetwood Mac. Because we so fucking been talking about it right before you hit record. So <laughs> no, um, no, I I agree with you. I, I I think adding another scene of them talking about it and then and then trying to solve it and then Lydia getting all fed up. Would have been fine, and there would have been more of an emotional impact on the end. Because right. Becca would have said some shit like, oh, fuck you, or whatever, and blah, 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 and then the next time she sees her, she's right. jumping out the window. This story is one of my favorite twists to... ever, though. This is a really good twist. The fact that... The room that this moves. Right, because I noticed that when I initially, as I was reading it again, um, they mention, uh, what's her face, the librarians mentions the tiny window instead of the large yeah, Granny window. Royce. And it gives the reader a... <laughs> It gives the reader a chance to kind of put the pieces together. I was kind of looking around to see if anyone like, caught on. I was hoping so. I did, but I was hoping that it wasn't just a fucking, you know, it was it was a, it was an accident that they did that. But it was cleverly no, done. So yeah, I think the whole thing. If you read, like, if you were to reread the story again from start to finish, now that you've read the whole thing, I think you would see how clever it is. No, it's well done. It is. Right. It's very clever and it's very. Yeah. No, clear. I mean, I mentioned it. I think I kind of summed it up earlier when I said that it was just it's it's clever, it's snappy, and it's fun to read. It's well done. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I really, I did. I really, I really enjoyed it. I just, again, I just wish I, and I, I hate to say that because we read other stories where we're like, there's too much, there's too much, show, right. there's too much revealed. And it's like this time I would have just a little bit more, just a little bit more. Right. Just to get some kind of affirmation of our crazy fucking theories. But no, I did, I did enjoy it. I think I might, I think you're right. I think if I read it, if I read it again, I would, I would probably enjoy it more. We're in fucking Lovecraft mode right now, so. Yeah, uh, Dylan? I I really liked it. I mean, uh, at first, you know, because 
unfortunate, some unfortunate events. I wasn't here for the first time. That burger fight! We win again! <laughs> it's coming all back! And, uh, we did no, honest to God go to Burger Fight you, know, you know, come back reading it. I mean, it really did. I did get invested into it, like I, I've said for the previous four fucking times now. But, like, it's it's really a very good attention grabber and it pulls you right into the story of what Rebecca is going through Jenna, by the whole story. Jenna, I have a question for you. Yep. Can we uh, have, uh, can we do a podcast sponsored by Burger Fight at Burger Fight? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been Scary Friends. Oh yes, the author is um, C.K. Um, Walker. C.K. Walker, good job. This one scariest story of 2015 it's for all of you to sleep. So yeah, that's it. So join us next time for the next thing, and I will see you later. Stay safe, everybody.